Hi, welcome to part 3 of Detailing Fundamentals. This is an extension of part 2 in which we created our manual layouts or marking plans and in this section we want to have a look at the editing of these guys and all the different bits and pieces that we may need to edit or we want to add or include into our layouts or marking plans. So let's kick off by making the group editable. If um, we want to edit this, it comes actually comes in as a detail block, as you can see there. To make it editable, what we need to do is we need to make it non-selectable as an entire group. Okay, and and now everything is selectable as sort of individual types of objects and so forth. So just a reminder that name groups can be found under the utilities bar. Alright, so what we're going to do, we're going to kick off by working on our work frame. Our work frame is now selectable and if you recall our scale was 1 is to 50. But the detail style that we used to create this could have had any scale whatsoever put in here. In this instance it was 1 is to 30. So we need to change this to the same scale as the border that we use or the title block that we use. So we'll just change that to 1 is to 50. If we tick OK you can see that that work frame just uh, increased in size. Now with the increase in size so does things like offsets and so forth. So you might want to tweak and adjust the text uh, X, text Y offset here, offset distance. Uh, always leave the size at 3 mil which will be 3 mil by the scale. But the distance, let's pull that back to 20 and you can see that in each instance it will it will pull the, the, the bubble back and tighten it up in the work frame. And we can offset them left and offset them right and so forth just to make things a little bit neater and tidier for us in presentation because in each instance it's probably going to be unique. Now in the power version each work frame has to be grabbed and altered individually so we just work our way from work frame to work frame. Now the next thing we're going to have a look at is the annotation labels here. Now they are not just ordinary text, they are true annotation labels. So if I go into the properties of one of those, you can see that it is it is a label rather than text. And you can update these, initially one of them, but I have a video in my set that shows you how to edit annotation labels by bulk. The next thing we're going to have a look at is these position flags. Now the position flags, although they can be selected individually, I've got a sneaky way to grab a whole heap of them here because they'll nearly all be the same scale. So if we come up to our element selection, the little triangle, and in our levels here we're going to look for PS pause, and once we pick that, everything on that level is going to be selected. And you can see that there, if I zoom out, you can see all the magenta uh, objects are highlighted PS pause right click PS properties and if I go to the general data layout I can set the scale there to be my new scale 50. Now see how there's zero at the moment that's because I've grabbed more than one. Alright so that's all done and they've all updated there now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to move these guys around. Now what you'll find is many of these are going to be in the same location which means that if you want to um, move a lot of these, you'll be able to grab the same row and move the whole row at the same time. Now, not all of these, a few of these beams are going to be different sizes, which means if I grab all that row as an example, and I slide them on down, so move that and slide them on down, I'll be able to line most of them up. Okay, you can see what we're doing here. You, you kind of get the idea. Now I'm dealing with multiple size beams here so it's not always going to work in this instance but be mindful. C can you move more than one of these at a time? Alright, so keep that sort of stuff in mind. Additionally you can just grab it um, and move it around and just slide it around like this. Okay, so this is a nice easy way of sort of doing that sort of thing. Now further on the pause flag thing I'd like to show you what if we want to do leaders and different types of flag with the ones we've got? Um, if I wanted to change this one to a leader, I'd actually come to the style and change it from, say, ISO group to standard. And it'll change to the standard one, which a standard is like a bubble and, and an arrow. And that will then allow us to drag the bubble around and rotate it 
as required using the little handles here. Now the rotation of these things is a little bit of an art. Um, I generally don't go to a lot of trouble with these as I'm showing you here on the screen. One of the other things I'd like to just point out too, if you move these around a few times, they get a little bit hard to grab the handles off, just window and it'll reselect it is my tip. This will be a select series eight thing. Um, we can um, copy the position flags, no problem at all. Again, you might need to window it if you've moved it around a few times, but you can copy it. If you double click it, you can just edit it if you wanted to. So I, I could move this down here and then spin it around and point it to the other one if I wanted to. I could change the number if I wanted to and things like that. So they're, they're pretty flexible. Okay, so, so just stay open to how these things work. The next thing we're going to have a look at is blow up details. Now again there's a video done of this where I go into great lengths of how to do it and all the settings but a real quick overview. We'll draw a circle around the um, area that I'd like to blow up. So just any size circle doesn't matter. After we've drawn the circle around there you can either choose to move it or, or resize it or whatever you'd like to do. Um, I like to make it the same level as dimensions as well so I can toggle details on and off with dimensions as well by the way. Um, I'd like to place a fence but the fence is actually the object or an element that is selected and I want to clip out what's inside the fence. So I want to make a clipping. Okay. While that's selected I'm going to right click, I'm going to choose to copy it, I'm going to copy it from one location to another with these settings, uh, I want the clip, I want to use the fence, I want to copy it from here out to here somewhere. While the second, while the new copy is still highlighted, right click and scale it. Change the scale to whatever you like, you know, um, two, you know, two up. Make sure this lock is on. All right. And you'll need to pick the center point of where you want the finished scale up to be. All right, it, it's as simple as that. From there, we're just going to draw a uh, we're going to draw a line uh, in again in dimension, and we're going to go from perpendicular snap to perpendicular snap, and that will do the trick for us. Moving on, the next thing we'll have a look at is getting our line scale, line type scale sorted out. We're working in model space here. Even though it's a 2D drawing, we're still in the model space. So if I come to the properties of this model space, you can see that the global line scale is currently one to one. If I change that to 50, now uh, this view that I've got there isn't probably a better one. Let's see if we can find something with hidden detail in it. Here we go. This guy's got a little bit of hidden detail in it. Actually, I want to get, here we go. You can see there, that the web now is is presenting correctly, um, particularly the pipe ties and stuff like that over there on the left. So, um, so you can see here. I just want to kind of reiterate the detail style itself doesn't really matter what scale the detail style is. It is so easy to just run through here and fix everything up and tidy everything up to suit the title block that we place. The final thing we've got left to do is have a look at these dimensions that uh, we want to increase the scale of or alter the scale of. You'll, you'll get this from time to time where you'll want to change the, the scale of your dimensions. So we'll kick off by opening up lineal dimensions and we'll go to the magnifying glass which will allow us to edit the style. You can see here there's a DS30 LS1 that was created from PS standard by ProSteel to work for the detail style, one is to 30. So I'm just gonna copy the label here of that so I can match it up. And then we're gonna come up to PS standard and we're going to copy PS standard. And I'm gonna paste that, just the text over the top and change 30 to 50. So I'm gonna create a new style at one is to 50. So we got one is to 30 and one is to 50 and it all looks the same so later it stands out to me. We're gonna to go to the advanced tab, general, placement and annotation scale is currently one to one. I want to just click on that and I can change that now to 50 and hit enter. That'll load that up and don't forget to save it. Now if I double click on that, that will make it current. 
Okay, so you can see up in here, it is current at one is to 50. Close that back off, because what I want to do is I want to window all the dimensions that I want to have updated. And then if you come up to this button here, that is fifth button along change dimension, if I click on that, everything that's highlighted will be updated. See, accept or reject, so I accept that. And you can see that all of them have jumped from one is to 30 up to one is to 50 now. Okay, so you don't have to do the whole project. I can just change the individual, one, you know, individual details that I want to update. Now, for moving these around, you can add and remove uh, dimensions as much as you want. To move them, seven modify element, so I can just grab it and move the dimension around. Okay, as you would expect to be able to move these guys. So you know you can snap to other dimensions and so forth. Okay, these are dimension elements, so they're not going to pull apart. They are treated as an element by MicroStation.